All right, today we're going to talk about tools. Some of the tools, anyhow. Pliers, wrenches, things like that. So we're going to start with the oddball here. This is an Allen wrench. It's eight-sided. Um, you can get them in a folding set. You can get them in a, a T-handled set. Uh, most electricians will carry the folding set because it's easy to put in their pouch. It doesn't take up a lot of room. Um, there's a smaller set than this. Uh, this is pretty normal. This will take a 200 amp uh, service. So more than likely you'll, you'll use the larger set most of the time in the field. Set of Allen wrenches. Here we have an adjustable wrench. It's a standard adjustable. It's got the little thumb screw. Um, this and an 8 inch probably the two different sizes you'll use. I like these for smaller quarter 20 and 3 8 bolts. Um, plastic handle is really not necessary. It's just for comfort. Keeps it from slipping out of your hands. Uh, they have new ones on the market now that have a little adjustable piece here that moves the jaw. <clears throat> I haven't used those, but it's something new. Give them a try. They're a lot quicker than these. Um, next you have the crimpers. Now this is a Thomas and Betts crimper, orange and black handles, it gives it away. Um, it's made for uh, uninsulated and insulated crimps. Now we're talking about fork, fork terminals, ring terminals. We're also talking about ground crimps. So if I'm using a ground crimp, I wouldn't use this. I'd use the indent piece on the ground crimp because the manufacturer says I have to have an indent crimper on those grounds. And I got a little cutter up here in the end. So it's one more tool but <clears throat> these are nice because I can crimp that ground and then I can shove it back in a box because they're nice and thin. And it's right at the end of the the crimper so it makes it really nice. Here we got what we, we call a pair of half moons or cable cutters. Um, they're made for cutting larger cables. Like I can cut a piece of 3 aught with this a lot easier than I can with a pair of Lyman's because I'm cutting from both sides. And it's also a thinner jaw, a thinner cut on it. Cutters come clear out to the end. Half moon means I'm cutting around the cable and not just on two flat sides. So these are handy. Not every electrician carries them. So it's a personal preference. Plastic grips, not really necessary. You shouldn't be cutting anything hot, so um, whichever. Here I have a pair of needle nose. Uh, very common in an electrician's bag for reaching back in the box, uh, making a hook for a wire. Uh, you can get a larger size of these that actually has a number 12 stripper in it. Electricians like them because they can take them out of their bag, strip out the 12 wire, make the hook, then go to a screwdriver. Uh, some guys don't like that that little number 12 stripper because then when they cut wires, it always one winds up in there. You got to cut it twice. So it's personal preference, whatever you like. Uh, again with plastic grips. Here we have dikes. These are dikes, or some people call them side cutters because they cut to the side. Um, it's important that you get a good pair of dikes. Nothing's more important than that when it comes to these for the simple fact that some dikes are, are blunt and when they cut they leave a, a point on the wire and that stuff is like a razor blade. You, you get across the end of that it'll cut you quick and, and leave you laid open. So a good pair of dikes will, will cut that nice and clean and, and you're good. Now this is a smaller pair made for a smaller wire. Um, this is a full-size pair. Now, if you notice, this pair's a little bent. You can get these that are straight. Um, they fit in the pouch a little better if they're straight. Uh, the nice part about the, the bent ones are, if I'm pulling a staple, I can run this in beside a staple, grab the staple, and then I've got plenty of leverage that I can pull that staple out with. So, not only am I cutting wire with these, I'm also using them to pull staples, um, and you see these have no handles on because again I shouldn't be cutting any uh, live wires with these and again those plastic handles they just make it stay in your hand a little better 
and uh, make it a little easier to work. As you can see these are, are well worn. All right, now here I have strippers. Three different strippers. They basically do the same job. These were the original strippers. They've got little marks on them. Uh, they come in metric and standard. I don't know why we do metric because we only sell AWG here. So here we're going from a 10 gauge to a 20 gauge. Marked on both sides. Spring loaded. Plastic grips. Easy use. So I can strip that wire, stick it in here, give it a twist. Now I'm ready to put it on my my device. All right. This one is the next step up. It does basically the same thing as this one. On the end, I've got my strippers. Got them in uh, solid and stranded. No metrics on these. Maybe see it a little better here. I could strip my wire, put it in here, give it a bend. I'm ready to put on a device. But these also have screw cutters. This screw cutter on the back, I can insert the screw from this side, cut it off, and when I unscrew it, this this chases the threads and makes sure it's good to put back in the device. So these are very, very handy when you got to cut off threads of a screw. Now, this is the new pup on the market. It's been out about four or five years. Spring-loaded, just like these. Plastic handles with the big grips because it's going to keep your hands uh, comfortable. But this is made for Romex. It's made for 14.2 Romex, 12.2 Romex. And it's also got a 14 and 12 gauge stripper here. So, plus I've got my 632 and 832 uh, screw cutters. So I can take my Romex, I can strip it out, and once I have my individual conductors, I can strip out the individual conductor. i got my screw and, uh, hole here. I can put that in there, give it a twist, make my hook, put it on the device. I can do a lot of things with these where... I'm limited with this. So as you can see, as the strippers have in, uh, improved over the years, just wire, wires and screws. Now I've got wire, jacket, and screws. So they've come a long way. This is what a lot of electricians are now carrying in their bags as opposed to these because I can do more with them. Plus if you look at these, they've got little bitty pliers on the end. So if I need to grab something, I don't have to grab another tool. <coughs> Alright, so we move on to Lyman's. Here I have two different Lyman's. Um, sometimes these are called nines because they're nine inches long. This would be considered an eight. For the longest time I carried eights because they're smaller. They fit my hands better. I don't have real big hands. So I like the eights a little better than I like the nines. The nines are a little bit big. So they're a little bit more heavy than these. Uh, now the one thing that this pair of 8's has that this pair of 9's doesn't <clears throat> is this crimper in the back. So if I've got a ground crimp that I need to crimp, I've got an index crimper built right in here. Now I've heard arguments that guys will say, well the manufacturer says to take a pair of 9's and I, I just crimp them up here. That's not what the manufacturer of the crimp says. The manufacturer of the crimp gives you certain model numbers for Lyman's that you can use on the crimps and if you look at those model numbers every one of them has those crimpers on it. So I've got a, a nice pair of pliers in the back, pliers in the front, cutters, a crimper and they're eight inches. They fit in my hand just a little bit better. These nines, a little bit longer, I got a pair of pliers here, I don't have anything on the back, I've got cutters here. Now this particular pair of pliers See how this is straight here? This is made for a piece of fish tape to come through. So I can run that fish tape to the, through there, crimp it down, and when I pull on it, it doesn't bend the fish tape. If I would do that thing, well, this, this pair doesn't open up. But a lot of them will open up here. But because it's curved, you'll bend the fish tape all up. And your boss won't be happy, see? Guys run the fish tape through there, and then when they come down on it, it bends the fish tape. But with this pair, it's actually made for that. So when you come down on it, it pinches it. It allows you to pull it and not bend your fish tape up. Nice feature for these pliers. <clears throat> and last but not least, are the 
technically known as water pump pliers. Um, everybody calls them channel locks because they've got a channel and they lock in the in the uh, groove in the in the channel. So it's a channel lock. Um, technically, that is the name. Channel lock is the brand. So these are all considered water pump pliers. Whether you get the big ones, whether you get the little ones. The ones that are used most are usually this size here because this covers most of your pipes. This is more if you get into a, a three inch or a four inch pipe that I need to grab a hold of, that's when I need this pair here. But usually for two inch through half inch, I can do that with these. And these are the channel lock brand of these are some of the best. Now there's a, another brand out there that actually has a little button that you have to push in order to change it. And whenever you lock it in place, that's the one it stays on because sometimes you have problems with these and they'll, they'll move on their own when you're in the midst of trying to do something and, and that gets annoying. But the, the other brand, uh, I believe the Irwins, they have a little push button. You push the button you change the size and it locks it in place. So you'll see these with or without um, grips. A lot of times electricians will strip the grips off of these. That way when they cut a piece of pipe they can use this to, to ream the outside of the pipe. Then they'll stick the handles down in the inside of the pipe and twist it and that'll ream the inside of the pipe. I just looked at some uh, Milwaukee uh, slip joint pliers, water pump pliers, and they actually have plastic handles down to about here, and then this is open metal, so that you can do that, but they get to keep the plastic handles. So it's all personal preference when it comes to these. Um, I've tried some Klein's, and believe it or not, Klein makes a great tool, but their slip joint water pump pliers are the worst I've ever used. So that's why I'm a big fan of channel lock brand slip joint water pump pliers. So that covers most of the pliers that you're going to be using in the field. There's others. There's a ton of other tools that you can use. And there's other tools you can use in substituted tools. So it's all a personal preference. But what you've seen today is what you're going to use mostly in the electrical field. If you've got any questions, please feel free to see your instructor.